Hey there everybody and welcome back to Northwest Craftsman. Today we're going to be talking about how to make a tongue and groove joint on your router table. It's super super easy and you're going to be able to use it basically anywhere you want in the future. All right let me show you what's going on. So a tongue and groove joint, here's my sample piece, a tongue and groove joint has two primary pieces. You've got the tongue which looks like this so it's kind of like you're sticking your tongue out and you've got the groove. Pretty self-explanatory but when you put them together you get your tongue and groove joint, which makes for a really nice interface between two boards, which is laterally pretty stable, and then for shear, very, very stable. But it makes for a really nice alignment as you're trying to go through, and you can even get some good slip fits as you uh, try and use these joints on different surfaces. So for a drawer, you may go with a tongue and groove joint if you want no metal hardware, and you just want this to slide easily through there. Or you can even do a half, if the weight of your drawer is gonna be right here. So you take this part of the groove off and then just let the drawer sit on that. So there's a bunch of different things that you can use a tongue and groove joint for. Um, and this is what it looks like. So let's pop over to the router and see how we start making this because there's really two stages. One is to make the tongue and one is to make the groove. And then you put them together and there's your tongue and groove joint. So on the router table itself, you wanna first choose a bit that's gonna be the correct size for what groove you want. And what I mean by that is on the groove, this groove is defined by your bit itself because you're literally just gonna run it right down the middle of the board. The tongue on the other hand, you can make a couple of different ways because as long as you've got enough depth on your bit to get all the way back here and you can raise your bit up high enough to hit all the way up there at the top, you're gonna be able to make this with a variety of bits. So I like to choose the bit that I'm gonna be making my groove with first and then just use that to cut my tongue as well because then all we're doing is we're adjusting the fence for how deep or how tall we need it, uh, for how deep we need the fence to go. So the first step to cutting the tongue is you're gonna take this and make sure that your fence is set to the correct depth so that you're cutting into the wood far enough and then you're gonna make sure your bit is set to the correct depth so that you're cutting deep enough into the wood so that you can carve out that channel that sits right there on the inside and then you're gonna do that to both sides. When you wanna set the depth on your fence, one of the tools that I have is this really handy dandy, ooh, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, this really handy dandy depth gauge. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description down below But this thing is super super awesome for trying to set the depth on the router table and set the depth of your, on your fence So on this one I want to go a half inch deep by a half inch tall on my tongue because I've got a half inch groove So it's basically a half inch all the way around So the way that I'm gonna get that uh, get to that is I want to make sure that this fence is set at a half inch deep from the furthest point out and you'll notice that on this router there's a couple of different points because you've got this plastic bit right here, but you've also got, oh, let me zoom, zoom back in for you. Now you wanna make sure that you're measuring from the furthest out blade portion because that is the extent to which it's going to be cutting out. So go ahead and take that portion right there, point it out as far as it can go, and then you're gonna take this guy and just make sure that you are sitting at exactly a half inch. Now, I've already set this ahead of time. When you get it set, should be reading at a half inch. Also to be clear, you can be as accurate as you need to be on these guys. This guy is going all the way out to a half a thou. I am finding that if I'm within a thou, I am getting about as close as I need to get because my pine is so soft anyways that it deforms more than that. So go ahead and be as precise as you would like to be, but we're gonna talk about the tolerances that I'm choosing to use and I am not going down to a true thousandth of an inch in caring about it. Next up, you're gonna go ahead and take the key for your uh, router depth adjustment and you're gonna want to slowly raise that up until you get it to the right height right here. So right now I'm only sitting at 0.418 and I really wanna have a depth if I'm gonna get it line to line of 0.50. Now what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna take this to 0.507, so I'm going 7 thousandth of an inch over the half inch mark so that the total slop that I get on my groove is uh, 14 thousandths of an inch. So the next step once you guys once you have that all set up is you're going to go ahead and take your piece of wood, run it through and get your tongue set on your workpiece. One of the other things that I should caution when you're cutting one of these things is that the reason why setting my height to a half inch is because these are one and a half inch, it's a two by four, so they're one and a half inches thick. Now, they're not really, they haven't been dimensionalized, so they're probably not exactly one and a half inches, but it's close enough for the purposes of this demonstration. When you take your workpiece, you wanna make sure that this tongue ends up centered within the middle of your workpiece, which means that you need to take three even chunks.
And so when you take your total thickness, divide it by three, that is the height that you need to set each one of these because this should be equal to this, which should be equal to this if you want your tongue to be centered. So in your case, make sure that you measure what the thickness of your lumber is and calculate correctly what the height of this ought to be. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and cut the groove. Now cutting the groove is a little bit different because this guy is gonna be cutting right out of the middle of everything. So you wanna make sure that your fence is set to the correct depth so that when you take your pass with your piece of wood right here, it comes through. Unlike this right here, you'd just be cutting a little tiny slot on the edge. You wanna move your fence far enough back that this hits right at the very center of your workpiece. Key thing to take in mind, when you're using the uh, tool that I was using to measure these, when you measure to the tip of this over here, you have half the thickness of your bit on. So you really don't, because you want this bit to be centered, you need to take half of your overall workpiece thickness and add half the thickness of your bit on here. So for me, three quarters of an inch back puts me right at the center, but if I'm measuring from this side of my bit, I need to add a quarter inch because this is a half inch bit, which means I'm gonna be measuring a total of one inch from my fence to this side of the bit. In other words, just be careful when you're trying to measure these out because it's really easy to end off by a half bit width, or more correctly, a bit radius or a half bit diameter. Alrighty guys, here's the moment of truth, putting these guys together. And there we go. This one is a nice, tight tongue and groove fit. So the way that you control how tight this is, is purely by controlling that depth when you're trying to cut this. Now, some of you are probably asking the question, when you control the depth of that and you don't cut it both directions, the depth, cut it in the same way in both directions, the depth of your groove ends up being the width of your tongue. Now, because you're putting a little bit of extra tolerance on your tongue, in my case, I put seven, seven thousandths on both sides, that means the depth on your groove is gonna be getting the same tolerance when compared to uh, the depth of your tongue over here. I opted to do that because essentially what that does is it gives me seven thousandths here, seven thousandths here, and seven thousandths here so that I can make sure that it fits nicely all the way around. And in this particular case, seven thousandths is a nice, tight tongue and groove fit. So if you wanted to go with something, what I ended up doing last time on this tongue in this groove is 15 thousandths on both sides. So I doubled it all the way around and that's where you get that loose fit that you saw at the beginning or just like this. So the other thing that you can do is take 15 thousandths all the way around or adjust that tolerance to whatever you want to make sure that you get as loose a fit as you want. So if you want something that's really loose, the other one that I did was 15 thousandths all the way around and it looks about like this. You get a nice sliding joint. But if you do 7 thousandths all the way around, you get this nice friction fit, very well mated tongue and groove joint right there. So there you go. In my experience, 7 thousandths is gonna give you a nice tight fit all the way around. And if you go up to 15 thousandths or somewhere in between there, you're gonna get a good sliding fit. So whatever you'd like to do, that's all yours. Well, that's it, you guys. There's not really much more to a tongue and groove joint, but man, are the useful joints to have when you're joining different pieces of furniture, especially when you're doing slats on a wall or slats on a piece of furniture. For me, it's gonna be on the bed frame for both the footboard and the headboard, the large two by sixes that are going across the uh, top and bottom those are gonna have tongue and groove joints all the way through. One other thing to keep in mind when you guys are using power tools is always use the proper safety equipment. I've got my safety glasses on that you can see. I'll take those off. And then uh, make sure that you've got hearing protection on. I have hearing protection on. You guys just can't see me when I'm using the power tools because I want you guys to see what I'm doing on the tools, not me. Thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. I hope that you have a great one and I will see you next time. Bye.